Hi, we're going to be looking at simple Rankine cycles, more specifically regenerative Rankine cycles. So the problem statement we have here is we're given an ideal regenerative Rankine cycle. They tell us that the maximal pressure and the maximal temperature are 10 megapascals and 550 degrees C. Steam is extracted from the turbine at 1 megapascal and the condenser operates at 10 kPa. They want us to solve for the thermal efficiency of the cycle using a closed feed water heater. So if we draw this out, we have a pump that goes to our closed feed water heater into our boiler. Then we're going through what I'm going to call our first turbine, then to our second turbine, but we have some steam that's extracted over here. Then finally to our condenser and back into our pump. So the steam that's extracted goes into our closed feed water heater over here through a valve and then back into the condenser. So if we put points on this here, we're going to use this as point one, this here as point two, three, four, five, I'm going to call this point 6, and this here is going to be point A. And we have flow going like this. So over here, what happens is we have some sort of split of the steam, and it comes back over here. If we draw this on our TS diagram, it looks something like this. We have our curve, so we have our low pressure, our 1 megapascal pressure, and our high 10 megapascal pressure. So we go something like this uh, over here, all the way down isentropically over here. And over here what happens is our enthalpy remains constant and we can kind of draw another point like this. So we can call this here point one, this here will be point two, this here where it splits point three, point four, this here is point five, and right over here we have point six, and this is going to be point A. And the flow looks something like this, it splits over here, and this goes we're actually given the enthalpies at these different points. So we're told right before a boiler, at point one, we have an enthalpy of 762.6. Right after our boiler, at point two, we have 3,501.9. Right before our split, at one megapascal, we have an enthalpy equal to 2,856.9. Then at state 4, right before our condenser, we have an enthalpy of 2,139.3. Then right after our condenser, before our pump, we have an enthalpy of 191.8. And then right after our pump, we have an enthalpy of 201.9. Now, keep in mind, all of these are in kilojoules per kilogram. They want us to solve for the efficiency of this system, the thermal efficiency. We can write that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work net divided by the heat added into the system. This work net here is going to be the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2 minus the work of the pump divided by the heat added in the boiler, Q in. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to assume that the work of the pump is approximately equal to zero, or it's negligible. Now, we can write that the work of turbine one is equal to the mass flow rate of our system times the enthalpy at point two minus the enthalpy at point three. We can write that the work of turbine two is equal to, now what's happening over here is that when we're going through turbine one, we have the full mass flow rate. Right at this point three, we have a split. We have some mass going into our closed feed water heater. So we have some sort of mass fraction here leaving. 
and then the remainder is going through turbine 2. So we can write this as our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction times the enthalpy at point 3 minus the enthalpy at point 4. And then our Q in is going to be the heat added in the boiler. So our mass flow rate, at this point we've returned all our mass to flow through our boiler times H2 minus H1. Now, what we can do to reorganize this is we can say that the mass fraction divided by our mass flow rate is equal to some value y. Then I can rewrite that my efficiency is equal to my mass flow rate times the enthalpy at point 2 minus the enthalpy at point 3, plus, this is with a bit of algebraic manipulation, 1 minus y, so our mass flow rate, this gives us just our mass minus our mass fraction, times the enthalpy at point 3 minus the enthalpy at point 4, divided by our mass flow rate times the enthalpy at point 2 minus the enthalpy at point 1. We can see here that our m dots cancel, and we get that this is equal to the enthalpy at 2 minus the enthalpy at 3, plus 1 minus y, our mass fraction here, times the enthalpy at 3 minus the enthalpy at 4, divided by the heat addition by the boiler. We've been given the enthalpy at all these different points, but we haven't been given our mass fraction y. In order to find it, we're going to take a closer look at our closed feed water heater. Now, from the pump, we have our full mass flow rate coming in. And this is going to be at state 6. Then coming out, we have, once again, our full mass flow rate, which is going to be at state 1. Coming into our closed feed water heater, we have our mass fraction here. That's at state 3. And then coming out of our closed feed water heater, we also have our mass fraction, which is at state A. Now, if you recall, we said that the work of the pump is equal to zero. What that means is that through our pump, we have no change in enthalpy, meaning that the enthalpy at five, or the enthalpy at six, is equal to the enthalpy at five. So we're going to change this here to be 0.5. Then if we look at our graph over here, we're also going to be saying that at point A, we have the same enthalpy as point 1. So this here becomes the same as point 1. Now, what we're also going to be looking at is we're going to be saying that the energy coming into the system is equal to the energy going out of the system. So we get m dot h5 plus m dot f h3 is equal to m dot h1 plus m dot f h1. If we do a bit of algebraic manipulations, remembering that y is equal to m dot f over m dot, and we also said that h1 is equal to ha, we can rearrange and find that y is equal to h1 minus h5 divided by h3 minus h1. This gives us 762.6 minus 191.8 divided by 2856.9 minus 191, or sorry, 762.6. This gives us a mass fraction equal to 0.2725. Now we have all the information we need in order to solve for a thermal efficiency. We said that our thermal efficiency was equal to the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2 divided by Q in. And this was equal to H2 minus H3 plus 1 minus Y H3 minus H4 divided by H2 minus H1. This is equal to 3,501.9 minus 2,856.9 plus 1 minus 0 0.2725 times 
0.9 minus 2139.5 divided by, actually this here is a 0.3, I apologize for that, divided by 3501.9 minus 762.6 and this gives us a thermal efficiency of 0 0.4. 260 or 42.6%. What if we weren't actually given these different enthalpies? How would we solve this problem? Well, we're actually given enough information to solve it. We're told that the maximum pressure is 10 megapascals and the maximum temperature is 550 degrees C. So we can say that P1 is equal to P2 is equal to 10 megapascals, and T2 is equal to 550 degrees C. We're also told that steam is extracted at 1 megapascal. So the pressure at 3 is equal to the pressure at 8 is equal to 1 megapascal. So P3 is equal to PA is equal to 1 MPA. And then we're told that the condenser operates at 10 kPa. So we know that the pressure at 4 is equal to the pressure at 5 is equal to 10 kPa. Pressure at 4 is equal to pressure at 5 is equal to 10 kPa. And I forgot to mention, this is a closed feed water heater, meaning this here is at 1 megapascal, but after our pump, we're actually at 10 megapascals, so the pressure at 6 is also equal to 10 megapascals. At 0.5, right before our pump, we're assuming that our quality is equal to zero. So we can say that the enthalpy at 5 is equal to 191.8 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy at quality equal to zero and 10 kPa. We're also going to be saying that through our pump, we have isentropic efficiency of 100%. So the entropy at 5 is equal to the entropy at 6, which is equal to 0.6. 493 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, which is equal to the entropy at X or quality equal to zero and 10 kPa. And then we find that the enthalpy at six is equal to 201.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy at 0.6495 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And 10 megapascals. We can then go on to find the enthalpy at point 2 to be equal to 3,501.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy at 10 megapascals and 550 degrees C. In order to solve the remainder of our points, we remember that through our turbines, we have isentropic efficiency of 100%. That means that the entropy at 3 is equal to the entropy at 4 is equal to the entropy at 2. And this is equal to 6.7561 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And this is the entropy at 10 megapascals and 550 degrees C. With this information, we can find that the enthalpy at 3 is equal to... 2,856.9 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at an entropy of 6.7561 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and a pressure of 1 megapascal, where our steam is extracted. We can also find that the enthalpy at point 4 is equal to 2,139.3 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at an entropy of 6.7561 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and a pressure of 10 kPa. So we found these two, we're missing our entropy at point 1. Over here, we're assuming that once our mass fraction comes out of our closed feed water heater, it's 100% saturated vapor. And we said that the enthalpy at point A is equal to the enthalpy at 1, and this is going to be equal to 762.6 kilojoules per kilogram, which is the enthalpy at quality of zero and one megapascal. 
So with only this information over here, we were able to get the enthalpy at all the different points in order to solve for our thermal efficiency. What if we didn't neglect the work of the pump? What would be our thermal efficiency then? We said that the thermal efficiency was the work net divided by Q in. This is equal to the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2 minus the work of the pump, still over Q in. Now, we said that the work of turbine 1 was equal to the mass flow rate times H2 minus H3. We said the work of turbine 2 was equal to the mass flow rate times 1 minus Y times H3 minus H4. And we can say that the work of the pump is equal to our full mass flow rate times H6 minus H5. And our Q in is going to be our mass flow rate times H2 minus H1. So we get that our thermal efficiency is equal to H2 minus H3, sorry, plus 1 minus Y, H3 minus H4, minus H6 minus H5, divided by H2 minus H1. Now, remember that we said y was equal to H1 minus H5 divided by H3 minus H1 when we were neglecting the work of the pump. This is wrong. We need to be consistent when we consider the work of the pump. Our mass fraction is going to change to H1 minus H6 divided by H3 minus H1.